Welcome back. If you haven't watched video one, this is video two to my two part So Along with Majida tutorial. Batman out and stunting. Kyle and tick like dumpling. Girl with big booty jumping. Action ready for the thumping. Fresh like Portland. Ends with a finisher. If you don't have a serger and you're just sewing, you should still be on this point. Everything should be closed because you have to add a lining. I'm going to make sure I link a video with another designer that I had used forever when I first attempted to start making puffer coats a few years back. And she does it with batting, with a lining. Um, she doesn't use a serger. So, you know, she does a technique with the cuffs and elastic, the waistbands, etc. So, I'm going to definitely link that down below so you can be on point. I'm a visual person, so I made this video like drawn out. I didn't try to speed through as much so you can have the visuals as well. And yeah, I did a voiceover because you know, anybody that's so in an industrial, the engine running in the back was driving me crazy listening to the engine on my sewing machine. So yes, we just cleaning up all those strings, high and imperfections, because the key is making our coat clean as possible clean as possible something ain't right you go back in and you fix it practice make perfect i mean all i do is so so you know it's like you get out of something what you put in you understand so if you practice a lot your work will definitely show the difference i started sewing in 2014 i could never sew before then and it's 2021 and i'm very content with how for my skill has came and some of the opportunities I had. So, and that's only just being uniquely me. So at this point, after everything's done, you're taking your chalk and you're marking the centers, the centers of both of your sleeves, the center of your collar, marking the center of your collar. I use chalk, like chalkboard chalk is easy to wipe, wipe off. I stopped using like the sewing wax in the chalk because sometimes it stains some fabrics. But at this point, we're putting our fronts and back together. So we're making them kiss. I always call it kissing. So you put the back panel down and you make the front two panels face, you know, like sides together, kissing, like sides kissing the proper way how to cool. If it would look inside out, if that makes sense. But you can really see me do it. So forget me getting all tongue tied. Yeah. So you just put both of the front panels on top of the back and pin them at the shoulders because we're going to take it to the machine and sew both of the shoulders to on both parts. So, you know, your front panels will be connected to the back by the shoulders. Both front panels will be connected to your back piece by the shoulders. So you can go to your sewing machine and go sew it and come on back because that's what it is. And if you need to pin them, pin to keep it in place because the key is keeping it neat and when you pin in your shoulders if it's a tad bit uneven start pinning at the sleeve line not the neck because you always can go in and fix that you don't want no imperfections at the sleeve so see we're gonna pin and you're gonna come back just like that yep now you're back from your machine your front panel should be connected to your back panel by the shoulders, double stitch everything to make sure your stitches is locked. The worst thing is having imperfections in your coat or you skip the seam after you put your sleeves on and stuff. So check your work, pull it, make sure it's right. Cause listen, if it's for a client or somebody, they are gonna pull it. So listen, they act like we own the thread, threads pop. I mean, I buy stuff from the store, it pops. But as a designer, they hold us accountable for things that's just like crazy. But anyway, Back to the coat. Now you're marking the center of your back panel. You're putting a center mark at your back panel where you're gonna connect your collar. And the same part where you mark the center of the collar, you're gonna pin it both center pieces where you marked. If you notched it, connect the notches and pin from the center out. The center out. Not from the side, the left or the right. You pin it from the center out where you marked on the collar and the back panel, you pin it on the center out. I'm just pinning it. I'm sorry, I'm all frame. Y'all know this is my first tutorial. I'm going to get this together and I was doing it by myself. But yeah, you're just pinning your collars, your collar on to your jacket now 
from the center out. So from the center part of your collar and there, where you mark that in the center part of your coat, you're gonna pin it. Now, take this coat to the machine and stitch that collar on to the jacket. Let's go. We almost done this jacket. We getting there, we getting there. I don't be using tags at times. Sometimes I print my Legos in, so that's why I was just showing y'all little vinyl and a little mini iron in the side of the jackets. So at this point, now you're pinning your sleeves where the front and back panels connect. You pin that from the center out at the center part where you marked on your sleeve. So the center part of where you marked that on your sleeve, you pinning it onto your coat. And you pin that center part to where the two panels connect from your front and your back. I'm gonna pin both sleeves and from the center out, same way, center out. And the reason why we doing that technique, cause when you close it up, say your front panel is a little uneven, your back, it kinda saved your life, I'm telling you. Now, take that to the machine, and sew both parts on, and then come on back. Let's go. Come on back, get that, both sleeves, pin from the middle, then bring it back. I'll see that's how it looks from the outside too you check it to make sure everything's tight look so now when we pin you start where the sleeves meet under the arm under the arm the point is making sure your sleeves meet up that's the most thing if your sleeves is not connected properly under the arm you, that's going to be a trouble space. When they lift their arms, it's going to pop all of that. So you connect it right there, you see, at that sleeve part, and you pin it. So pin it from that part out to your wrist. Pin from that part out to your wrist, down to your coat. Once you finish pinning, take it to your machine and stitch it. Let's go, get it together. So you're going to pin it from that underarm part, like I said, from the underarm part out to your wrist, and then come back to the bottom of the coat. So you just pin from that part out to the wrist to ensure the sleeves are connected the right way. And then you pin at the bottom part. So if your front is uneven from the back, you can fix that imperfection. But your sleeves, you don't want the imperfection in your underarms or your sleeves. None of that's gonna cause your jacket to pop. Yep, you check all of that. Flip her inside out. You checking that. You see, she's looking good. Checking, making sure everything. So at this point, we getting ready for this waistband. Once we make sure everything's tight, you checking all your stitches, everything right. You can flip the jacket on the right side. But that's after you make sure everything's right. And I didn't have pockets on this jacket in the video, but, but... I apologize. I realized that, of course, all the way through, but I'm just giving you this foundation, baby. So we getting ready for the waistband after we check everything. That's all I'm doing. Just making sure everything's right. So with the waistband, you're just measuring the bottom of the jacket once you're already sewing it together. So, you know, you're measuring it from one end to the other. I'm marking the center of my jacket, you know, but I start applying my waistband from the one end to the next. You know, um, it's really not no particular way to add the waistband. Because once you do the measurements, I usually add two to three inches to make sure it's long enough just in case any imperfections. And once you sew from one end, it's going to be more than enough left. And that's it. Before you sew your waistband on, make sure you take it to the iron and press it. Yeah, I forgot that one small part. Yeah, I like surge and everything. It just keeps the inside clean. If you don't have a serger, you know, the same way you put your waistbands, fold it in half, sew it, and you're connecting it to your jacket from the right to the left, the left to the right, however you put a waistband. I double stitch that as well. I double stitch everything because I'm not trying to go back after I built the coat to go fix anything. At times, sometimes I top stitch with details, but on this video, we just going into the foundation of the coat. This is your design.
So you to make it do what it do. With this foundation, you should be able to build your coat. So get that waistband on, get it attached, and get it all the way onto your coat. And after that, we're going to get ready for the sleeves, the cuffs, adding the cuffs and the sleeves. Remember, I have a video linked in with another designer that made a puffer coat I watched a few years back. She goes into how to customize the waistband, the cuffs out of the same fabric. She goes really in depth. Of course, I'm going to have some more videos, but I'm going to make sure I have all the information on here. So once you get yourself ready, you'll be ready to build your coat. Look, see, I measured my waistband a little short, so I had to make a little extension and add it on to my waistband. And you know, if I wasn't on the video, the seam was ironed to make it flat. I ironed every seam. But for the video, I just didn't show that part. So, you know, if that happens to you, you can just connect them, iron that seam, then close it up, finish adding your waistband on. We human, we make mistakes. The key is noticing your mistake and going back and just clean it up. You know, that's it. The worst thing is when a client notices the mistake. So, look, G didn't mess up some codes. I ain't gonna say messed them up. I learned from the codes. So, let's get ready for these wrists. The wristbands, okay? We getting ready for these wristbands. On this jacket, I save everything. When I um, upcycle, construct, whatever you want to call it. When I cut up hoodies, sweatpants, everything, I don't waste nothing. So their wristbands are probably sweatshirts I was color blocking or when I was making stack pants last year. So yes, I like mixing textures. So I'm just cleaning up that cuff that I had made to fit my jacket. Um, to add on whatever you use for your wristband that's all I'm doing on this point is adding your wristbands on so whatever your wristband is remember I that video she's showing you how to create them wristbands you know so if you need to pause it pause it if you need to until you get your wristbands complete and you're ready to get to this point so yeah I'm just cleaning up all that before I add it on and remember when you stitch your wristbands on Anything with like elastic, I mean, you should notice if you're sewing a puffer coat because this is not like a beginner project, if you ask me. You know, you just make sure you have to stretch it as you're going. You know, so when you're putting that wristband on, I put it on like the same way you wear a shirt and you put it on right sides kissing <laughs> with the jacket inside out. You know, you can pin it in place if that's the easiest for you. Yeah, pin it if at north, south, east, and west you know, to save your life. Then you don't have to stretch it as you sew in. So yeah, all I'm doing is getting both of them wristbands on and connecting the wristbands onto this jacket. Let's go. We almost there. You just getting both of those sleeves stitched with some wrists. <laughs> getting both of them wristbands on your sleeve. So that's it on both. You know, my bobby ran out. You know, the stuff that happens. That's the only thing about the industry. I always got one ready, waiting in the tuck. I think I make like five or six bobbins when I'm doing puffer coats, cause you know, between top stitching, the linings, if I color block, use a lot of thread. So I'm like stopping when I'm sewing. But yeah, I'm just getting both of them um, sleeves with some wrists, getting the wristbands on them sleeves. Other side did the same thing, both sides kissing. And you make them seams meet up, the seams where your sleeve comes together and where your wristband connect, make them meet up. You know, you're trying to make it look clean. So your inside looks as clean as your outside. Yep, the inside as clean as the outside. Pull it from there, make sure everything's perfect. I had a little problem on there when I pulled it. So I had to go back in, fix that little part on the cuff. Make sure ain't nothing messed up. Look, getting that right. Because when I get done this jacket, I need my coin. I don't need the client trying to make some idiotic excuse because it takes you some time. Puffer jackets definitely are like double, double process, triple process. That's what I'll be calling it. I mean, a process is one process is cutting it out. Sewing is two processes. So cutting it out and sewing is two processes for you. So puffer coats, you know, is a double process. Third, a triple process because you have to stuff it quadruple because you know with the lining and if you color block you go into five or six processes it depends how much detail you add on so it's definitely time so you know you take your time make sure your jacket's clean because you need your money you want to get paid for your work 
because we all, I mean, we love what we do. But once you start having clients and you be catering to people, the worst thing is somebody making a big deal like we're not human and won't make mistakes because we're human too. But I usually use a looper, but I didn't use a looper for the sake of the video. Saves your life. You know, I mean, when you do bra straps, pocketbook straps, anything to flip inside out, it go in, it's done. So, I mean, I think that was like five bucks. I'll make sure I link the description for Looper. I got to find it on Amazon because I bought that one from like Joann's or Michael's. Yeah, Joann's. But yeah, they save your life. My girlfriend Yada showed me that before like a Looper. I'm like, what the heck is that? That's what happened when you go. Yeah, shout out to my boo Yadis. Yes. The girl that was showing me what I know. My girlfriend came like. She knew what it is. She just was never afraid to put you on. She was confident in herself. Y'all, this is from the P. Yes. My girlfriend. But yeah, getting back to that waistband. Um, you want to feed the elastic in your waistband through your jacket. Push it in. Feed it to the other end. I already know. You're feeding it in through the whole casing. Getting the elastic into the whole casing. And once you get it to the other end... You pin one end. I use a safety pin to pin. So once you get it to the oven, it don't pull all the way out. That's the worst thing if the last they pop back out. And then when you get it to the right end, you pin that side as well. But you pull it enough that it scrunches, but not too much. You don't want it too tight that when somebody wear the jacket, it leaves lines on their waist. So make sure you scrunch it accordingly, according to your eye. It doesn't have to be stretched so much when you pull it, it snaps back. That means you pull the elastic too tight. If that makes sense, because, I mean, I had some jackets. You'd be looking like it's pulling over, like the jacket was stressed out. Stressed out at that part. Because, I mean, I had that elastic pull. Like, I was giving them the Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola snatch weights, okay? So, look, that's why you got Vegeta to save your life, to not make any of these mistakes I made along the way, the way, and to help you out as much as I can. So, we still feeding this elastic through the coat. And I apologize, y'all couldn't hear me, because you know I always be having some jokes when I'm recording. But the engine from my sewing machine, the motor, was just so loud again. So I just couldn't take the noise. So I had to voice over this whole video. Yes, and this was some work. But look, we here. So we got the elastic in. You want to pin it where you need it to be. You see a little scrunch came along. Yes. Take it to the machine. Lock that elastic in at both sides. Lock, 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 lock. And you see, before we even pulled it a lot, it already had, like, the scrunch. So you're just making it just enough that it ain't too hard. That's all I'm saying. You see. You'll be able to tell. You see, when I pulled that, you could tell when it was too tight. So you'll be able to tell. It shouldn't be all, yo. Yeah. Should be able to flex the fabric, if that makes sense. But look, we're getting to the end. Yes. Look, if nobody didn't tell you you was decent, Majita did. Because you made it this far, we out here sharing this knowledge. We getting this puffer coat. We got the pattern for you. Listen, I ain't had that from other people. People be acting like stuff is gold. You be like, well, um, how you put that zipper on? I'm like, oh, I can't remember. You can't remember how you put a zipper on? You don't remember where you bought that fabric you just got last week? You don't remember what video you watched to help you learn how to do this? Girl, share this knowledge. Share it. A great, one of my great mentors told me, she said, if I die with all this knowledge, what I'm going to do with it? Sharing that to say, if somebody's not confident or comfortable in their skin, they not sharing that knowledge. Congratulations. We to the point almost at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I needed this for my soul. So I finally got this tutorial out here to the universe. So let's go. A link to this downloadable pattern will definitely be in the description. $10, you got this pattern for life. And size is 37 to 42. So you can scale it down for small to extra small and scale her up. The 42 is like an XL, but it's a size chart on there as well. So you can look at the measurements and make it work. Because I believe I bought the pattern from like Europe or somewhere. So you know it's not in our standard sizes. But I appreciate you guys and stay safe and pray for Philly because our city is like going through it at the time and stay dope and keep creating and make sure you like and subscribe yes i'm gonna keep seeing it like and subscribe let's go
2021 is ending with a bang. I had to get this video out before the year was in. I appreciate you guys watching to the end. And I'm just showing like the insides and out because the key is to get our jacket clean. So with the serger finisher, you know, you don't have to add them triple linings. And if you need a double lining, what I do is just double the lining fabric when I'm sewing it. Because you don't want to be able to see the cotton through it as well. So like if you use bandanas or stuff like that, double the bandana. Meaning put another fabric under it because bandanas are thin. So, you know, if you're using a thin lining, double the lining at the same time when you're sewing it. So you don't have to do the work, especially if you have a serger. Because the cloak is clean once you clean up everything so it together is ready to go once you put your closures and your finishings on she is getting her cool clean 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 so practice make perfect so i appreciate you guys and i'm proud of you guys and we made it to the end this two-part tutorial and i hope i gave you a good foundation or understanding how i construct uh, my jacket so you can figure out what to do for you make sure you like and subscribe and it'll be a link to this pattern i'm gonna give you a ten dollar downloadable pattern there'll be a link on there as well a couple links of some of my work so if you don't know me make sure you follow me on the media i'm around and please give me suggestions or ideas of whatever videos you would like me to go over some diys etc just remember you the boss so in this fashion world remember Majita monet told you we don't follow trends we set them peace